My subject this evening that I'm going to use is God is my strength and power. Let me say it again. God is my strength and my power. The psalmist David made a bold statement, a bold declaration of faith in 2 Samuel chapter 22, verses 29 to 33, and I'll read for you. For thou art my lamp, O Lord, and the Lord will lighten my darkness. For by thee I have run through a troop, and by my God have I leaped over a wall. Verse 31, as for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all them that trust in him. Verse 32, for who is God? Save the Lord. And who is a rock? Save our God. Verse 33, God is my strength and my power, and he maketh my way perfect. Let me say it again. God is my strength and power, and he maketh my way perfect. I like what Pastor Tuttle said uh, leading into uh, the introduction here this evening. He said, there's never been a greater day to be apostolic. And I concur with that 100%. I believe the greatest apostolic church that has ever existed is the church of today. I believe the greatest apostolics that have ever lived are those that are alive today. I believe God's greatest vision has been saved for this day that the greatest revival the world has ever known is gonna happen in our day. Signs, wonders, miracles, power, all of that is gonna be greater in our day than in any other time in history. And I thank the Lord for that. You may be thinking, Brother Cunningham, why would you start off with such a powerful declaration of faith? And why would you make such statements about the church and this day? Uh, I am aware of coronavirus. I am aware of COVID-19. I am aware that World Health Organization has declared it a pandemic. I am aware that your states and mine have all put very strict restrictions on people and my gut tells me they're gonna get stricter before they're eased most likely. I'm telling you that it's time for the church to stand up and declare who we are and where our faith is. Who do we have faith in? Do we have faith in the system? Do we have faith in governments? Do we even have faith in the medical profession? And I commend them for the tremendous job that they're doing, but that's not where my faith is. My faith is in a God that's got all of this in his hand. It's all under his control. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, the next day, next week, next month, but I can tell you this for sure. God is going to have the final word. God always has the final word. And when this is all said and done, every child of God is going to be able to say, if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, every child of God is going to be able to look back and see the mighty hand of God at work in their life through these very dark days. I want to give the church just a little word of caution, if I might, at this point. I am, I'm concerned. I'm concerned about the amount of talk that is going on in religious and Christian, specifically Christian ranks about the devil. I'm going to be bold enough to tell you, I think there's way, way, way too much talk about the devil among children of God. People trying to figure out what is the devil's plan? What is the devil's strategy in our day? What's he capable of doing? Uh, I, I just recently saw a study. I didn't read it. I just read the title. And the study was about the dominion of the devil. What is his dominion? I can tell you I don't care what his dominion is because I know that all power in heaven and earth was given to God's church and given to Jesus Christ, and he in turn gave it to us. We don't we have to worry about any of the power of the devil or what he is capable of, what he influences, or what his strength is. That's not our concerns as apostolics. I want to be bold enough to say to every apostolic watching anywhere in the world, that apostolics need to stop trying to figure out what the devil's up to. 
We need to stop thinking about him altogether. He ought to be inconsequential to us. He ought to be just nothing, nothing we even think about as children of God, as apostolics, Holy Ghost filled, powerful apostolics. We need to quit talking about the devil. We need to quit caring about what the devil does and what the devil says. These are days that are full of prophecy. These are the days that we're going to see the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. These are the days that the clouds are going to split. A trumpet is going to sound and God's going to take a victorious church out of the earth. Not a whipped church, not an immune church, not, a, not an anemic church, not a weak church, but he's going to take the most powerful apostolic church that there's ever been out of the earth when that trumpet sounds. I want to declare to every one of us tonight that the devil does not have power over you. Not one of you, not one person under the sound of my voice does the devil have power over. And I'm also going to say you have power over the devil. Not only does he not have power over you, you have absolute power over him. If I could quote the Lord Jesus himself, he said, behold. I give you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all, A-L-L, -L, over all the power of the enemy and nothing, N-O-T-H-I-N-G, nothing shall by any means harm you. Folks, that's the church you belong to. That's the kind of believer that you are. That's the kind of person you can be in God to have that kind of strength and power. I want the newest, most novice child of God in our churches to understand that you are more powerful than the biggest, baddest devil in all of hell. You don't got to call Jack Cunningham or Mike Tuttle or Lee Stone King or David Bernard when the devil comes against you. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. It don't matter if you're one of those that just got baptized a few minutes ago and just recently received the Holy Ghost. There's more power in you than there is in all of hell combined. Your Jesus name, your Holy Ghost filled. Man, if I had a church in here tonight, we'd be shouting. Two powerful truths I want you to grasp. I want you to get this. Number one, as a Jesus name, Holy Ghost filled, apostolic believer, you are powerful. I want that to sink in just for a moment. You are powerful. The second thing I want you to get is that this end time apostolic church that we belong to is more powerful than any other force on earth. There's not a government that can stop this church. There's not communism can't stop this church. Sin can't stop this church. False religion can't stop the apostolic church. There is not a power on this earth more powerful than an apostolic church. Again, I'm going to say it to you over again. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Jesus said, upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it talking about the church the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church he didn't say there wouldn't be battles there's going to be battles with the enemy he's going to stick up his old ugly head somebody said to me the other day oh pastor the devil's doing everything he can do to stop me i said you said that right He's doing all he can do. He don't have anything left to throw at you. He's already took his best shot. He's doing all he can do, and he can't stop you. Oh, we got to get a hold of it tonight. The gates of hell shall not prevail against this apostolic church. I'm here to tell you tonight that this church was designed by God to be powerful. This church is spirit-filled. This church is spirit-led. This church is spirit infused. This church is God ordained, God built. This is a genuinely apostolic church that you and I belong to. It's a blood bought church. It's a Jesus name church. It's a Holy Ghost church. It's a revelation church. It's a Bible church. It's an apostolic church. We're apostolic to the core. There is nothing 
more powerful than an apostolic church doing and being everything that God designed it to do and be. Let me say that again. There is nothing more powerful than an apostolic church doing and being what God designed it to do and be. I would present to you that the apostolic church has never been stronger or more powerful than it is today. This is the greatest day in all of history to be an apostolic. We're stronger doctrinally. We're bigger numerically. We're powerful in prayer. We're more powerful in the gifts of the Spirit today than ever before in the history of the apostolic church. We have stronger preaching, more biblical teaching. We have great men and women of God among us. All five of the, uh, uh, of the fivefold ministry are in operation among us. Apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers. They're all alive and all well and all operating in the church today. This church is powerful in faith. We are a faith church. Now, these are the kinds of times that try our faith. COVID-19 is going to try the faith of a lot of believers. This coronavirus, this pande pandemic, it's going, it's going to attack the faith of a lot of believers. But we need to be strong in faith. We need to be more faithful than we've ever been. We need to declare our faith in God every time we get a chance. We need to speak it out. Bible said death and life are in the power of the tongue. We need to speak it in faith. That we believe that God's in charge. We believe that God has us in the palm of his hand. And we believe that God's going to have the final word, yes, even with COVID-19. The Bible tells us that Abraham was strong in faith. In fact, he's called the father of the faithful and the friend of God. But he was strong in faith. And then the apostle Paul tells us how Abraham grew strong in faith. He introduces us to three powerful concepts. Number one, he said, Abraham considered not his own body now dead, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. Number two, he said, Abraham staggered not at the promises of God. And number three, Paul said that Abraham was fully persuaded that what God had promised, he was well able also to perform. For those that want to be strong in faith, that's the path right there. There is the biblical path to strong faith. Number one, consider not what's going on around you. Don't worry about it. Don't let it shake. Number two, don't stagger at the promises of God because they seem so great and so big for the church of our day. And number three, we need to all be fully persuaded that what God has promised He's able also to perform. Those are the steps to having strong faith. I'm glad to tell you today that God is our strength and power. I'm glad to tell you that God is our refuge and strength. And the Bible says a present help in trouble. Now this isn't in my message today, but let me stop here as a pastor just a moment and tell you this is the only place that phrase is found in the bible that god is a present help in trouble there's no place else in your bible that the words present help are even used together the only place that god says i'll be a present help not a far off help not a casual help not a help that's indifferent i will be a present help when when you're in trouble America's in trouble right now. Our states are in trouble. Our world is in trouble. But I'm glad to tell you, God said, I'll be a present help in trouble. Strength and power requires that we have, number one, faith in God. Strength and power requires that we believe the word of God to be forever settled in heaven. Strength and power requires that we know God. I mean, have an intimate relationship with God. Strength and power requires that we communicate with God on a regular basis. I don't even say daily. It ought to be several times a day. What if we only communicated with our spouse daily and felt like that when we had done that, we had we don't have to worry about it again till tomorrow? Or how about that 
child in your home that you love, if you just one time a day said a little something to them and then thought, I won't say nothing again till tomorrow morning, that isn't the way it works. If there's a love relationship, if I know him and he knows me, I'm going to communicate with him all day long. I believe it's what the scripture means when it says pray without ceasing is that you're just always in a mind to talk to the Lord, to feel his presence, to want to communicate with him. And number five, strength and power requires depending on God. So faith in God, believe the word of God, know God, communicate with God and depend on God. I probably don't need to say it, but apostolics, we're not dependent on man's ability. We're not dependent. Our strength is not in our talent. And we got a lot of great talented people, but that's not the strength of the apostolic movement. Our strength is not dependent on man's wisdom. It's not dependent on education. It's not dependent on what our what connections we have, either in the political world, the banking world, the religious world, or wherever. No, 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 no. Our faith is in God. The Bible said the name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous run into it and are safe. There's where our strength is. Our strength is in Him. Our faith is in Him. We're dependent upon Him. My, 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 I feel the Holy Ghost on this live stream this evening. The Bible said at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of things in heaven, of things in earth, and of things under the earth. Let me explain to you quickly what that means. You're a Jesus name person. And this is a promise given specifically to people that understand, have a revelation of the power of the name of Jesus. He said, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. And if the scripture stopped there, we'd think it was talking about human beings. But it goes on to say in heaven, in earth, and under the earth. Heaven is angels. And the Bible said at the name of Jesus, everything in heaven is going to bow a knee. On earth, that's humanity. That's all men. Doesn't matter who they are, where they're from, what they do, how powerful or not powerful they are, how educated or not educated they are. Everything on earth is going to bow to the name of Jesus. And then everything under the earth. You're a Jesus name believer. You're a Jesus name apostolic. And I want you to know that when you use that name, angels are going to bow down and they're going to pay attention to, to how you use that name. If you've got people that are coming against you or your family trying to hurt you, I challenge you to use the name of Jesus, not to hurt them back, not to be vindictive, but to ask God to protect you and to take care of you and, and, and to help you not to be uh, uh, afflicted by what they have purposed against you. But in earth, men are going to bow when that name is used. And then under the earth, honey, the devil don't have nothing that he can fight back with when you use the name of Jesus. I know my time's up and I'm closing here. I, I, I want to leave you with one little one minute thought and then I'm going to pray and I'm going to turn it back to Pastor Tuttle. But in the book of Job, the Bible says that God asked the devil. Have you considered my servant Job? The devil answered God. I think it's a very, very unique answer. He said, God, I can't touch him. You have a hedge around Job. That hedge is protecting Job, and I can't get to him because of the hedge. Here's how I'm going to close today. I'm going to pray a hedge around everyone that is watching this live stream. I don't, it don't matter where you are in the world, where you are in America, where you are in Canada, where, wherever you are, I'm going to pray a hedge around you. And right where you're watching from, would you reach out and join hands with people around your living room or kitchen or wherever you're watching at? And if you want to lay hands on one another, the Bible said believers have a right to lay hands on one another. And so lay hands on one another or join hands and I'm going to pray. Would you bow your heads? Would you close your eyes and give God your undivided attention? By the authority of the word of God and by the power that is in the name Jesus, 
God, I pray a hedge of protection around your people. I feel the Holy Ghost right now. God, I pray a hedge of protection around your people. A hedge that no evil spirit can penetrate. A hedge that no evil human influence can penetrate. A hedge that panic or fear cannot penetrate. And I ask these things in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I thank you for that hedge, God. I believe you're putting up a hedge around every believer that is listening right now. God, let there be a hedge around their home, around their family, around their children, around their marriage, around their finances, a hedge around their mind, a hedge around their health. I pray it in the name of Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I call it done. God bless you. I love you. I'm praying for you. you can